Okay. Um, uh, uh, I guess first we'll do the. Let me see what I have here. Um, let me bring this to order. First, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. All stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, okay. Uh, can we have a um, roll call, Claire? Thanks. Here. 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 Good. Okay. All right. Um, uh, the notice requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act law for this meeting have been satisfied. A copy of the notice having been sent to the Asbury Park Press and the coaster and filed in the ocean in the office of the, of the township clerk. Um, there's an emergency exit through the courtroom doors and two exits at the right of the room. No smoking. Uh, no new cases will be started after 10.30 p.m. and no new testimony taken after 11 p.m. All meetings will be video and audio taped and shown on the Township of Ocean's community cable channel, channel 22 on Verizon Fios and channel 77 on cable vision. All cell phones must be turned off or if you need to make a call, please make your call outside the meeting room. Okay, um, we had a minor site plan subcommittee application, and I think um, I'm going to read this, uh, but I'm going to recuse myself from this, okay? Um, Hollywood Golf Club, Block 40, Lot 123, 1234, 82, 83, 84, 88, 100, and 101, 510, Roselle Ave, Ocean, 07712, Zone R1, Attorney um, Ms. Krimko. Applicants seek approval from the minor sub planning committee to demolition approximately 800 square feet of area from the existing clubhouse and to construct new one story addition totaling 3,686 square feet to the clubhouse. Um, Mr. DeFiglia, would you like to um, talk through this? And sure. Thanks. The minor site plan subcommittee reviewed this application and is unanimously recommending to the board to approve it. So I would ask for a motion to accept and approve this minor site plan application. I'll second. Well, I'll make the motion. Oh, sorry. Moved by Mr. Paluta, seconded by Mr. Monty. Um, roll call vote, please, Claire. Monte? Yes. 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 I'm going to recuse myself. Okay. Um, there's a correspondence on uh, 7, 720 Cor Corlius Avenue, Block 7. Do I need to look at this or make a, a motion about this? Or? I think it's just for information. Just information that we, that we received this? Yeah. Okay. We received this letter around um, an application for flood hazard uh, area verification. Okay, can I get um, uh, approval of minutes for August 26, 2024 and September 23, 2024? Can I get a second? I'll second. Thank you. I made the motion. That can be in all favor for the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. So we have our continued case of 3200 Sunset Commons LLC, Block 137, Lot 23, uh, 3200 Sunset Avenue, Ocean 07712, Zone C3. Um, just for this case, um, Mr. Paludis uh, did listen to the um, last hearing and uh, has certified that in writing that he is up to date on all the discussions. So Mr. Paludis can uh, vote and uh, on this as well. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I believe the only issue that we did not finish at the last meeting where there were concerns about the traffic along Correct. Logan. 
Correct, right. And I think that's the really the sole reason we're here tonight. Yes, correct. I think that was the only thing we were not comfortable. I think we settled all other matters, right? Correct. Yep. Yep. Ooh, excuse me. Watch yourself. I, I'm trying to break my other arm. A little for, equilibrium problem there? Yeah, no. It's a whole story, <laughs> Jeff. Uh, for the record, Jennifer Krimko from Law Firm of Van Grimm and Aaron, on behalf of the applicant, we did not present our planning testimony for the minor variances. I'll defer to the board whether or not that's necessary. The variances, though, however, had nothing to do with the access. At the board meeting, uh, we had proposed alternative access to Logan Road, and one of the board members, I think board member Duffy, had suggested limiting it to right in, right out only on Logan Road in an effort to avoid any issues from the objecting neighbors who lived across the street. Uh, ben had indicated in his mind, well, it can't hurt, but he's not a traffic engineer. So we hired a traffic engineer to examine a couple of things. First, to examine the existing roadways, the traffic patterns on the existing roadways, whether or not adding traffic onto Logan Road is appropriate or whether or not it would become a problem. Um, and again, and I don't remember, I think Mark brought it up. I mean, it's a permitted use, we're entitled to the access, but because the neighbors were concerned, we wanted to give the board that comfort. Um, and also to look at uh, accident reports to see what's going on there. So Justin uh, Taylor, did prepare a traffic uh, state traffic impact study. It was submitted to the board. I'd like to move that in as A7. And, and I will just I will just say at the outset that um, Ben did review the report and took no exception to it in his review letter. Uh, he did put in his letter he made the suggestion with regard to restricting the Sunset Avenue. Uh, driveway and we did have an opportunity to speak with our expert and we spoke with Ben and uh, we're not opposed to a uh, partial restriction but as you're going to hear a full restriction will one cause confusion for cars that travel in sunset looking to come to our site and two more importantly will push all traffic uh, onto Logan which as you know is not what the neighbors wanted so as we go through the testimony just so the board can keep in the back of their minds. What we would agree to is a no left turn out onto Sunset Avenue during the uh, peak hour, which is from four to seven, which is the reason why we want this alternative exit in the first place. Okay. So I would just use that as the framework to introduce Justin, have him sworn and qualified, and then go through uh, what his findings are. And, and just to clarify one thing, I didn't say that the board couldn't restrict you from going out onto the road. I, what I think what I said was it's a permitted use. We can't take off-site traffic into consideration, right. use, but that doesn't mean that you're automatically that you're allowed on to access onto there. Hundred percent. I, okay. didn't, I, 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 I certainly didn't mean to represent it any other way. What I was okay. what I was suggesting was it, we weren't responsible to show that the roads can accommodate it, Correct. but because we're asking for this access on this lesser roadway, which we believe we're entitled to, we wanted to bring a traffic engineer just yeah. really to speak about restricting that Logan Road mm -hmm. and more importantly to give you guys the comfort that Logan Road has the capacity and it will not cause a problem for the neighbors across the street. Okay and we agree that that's where we were. Okay so do you swear that any testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, self you got? I do. And just state your names for the record. Justin Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R. And you are a licensed engineer state of New Jersey specializing in traffic? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So, Justin, you, you had the opportunity to do traffic counts, um, and you prepared a report, which we moved in as A7, so while I'm sure the board members read it, could you just summarize your findings and your recommendations? Sure. So, after hearing the, the concerns of the board at the last hearing, um, I was commissioned to take a look at both the existing conditions along both Sunset Avenue and Logan Road, as well as the potential impact of creating a driveway out to, uh, to Logan Road. Uh, by way of background, what we did was we went out and we conducted traffic counts to figure out the baseline volumes that are going on out there today. Um, we typically in the traffic engineering world look during the AM and the PM peak hours because that tends to be the highest volume of traffic on these type of roadways. So we looked from 7 to 9 in the morning and from 4.30 to 6.30 PM. Um, and just to interrupt, that's generally also the peak hours for medical office buildings. So they did coincide. That is correct. We also consulted with the applicant to find out the busiest day that they have on their site when all the doctors are there. And it turns out Thursday afternoons 
where Thursday is are their busiest days. So we went out and made sure that we were collecting data during the busiest time of that existing use. Um, we then also analyzed the driveway of their site. We wanted to know who was coming to and from the site and realistically, where are they going, where they're trying to get to, whether they're back to 35, whether they're heading east on Sunset, up and down Logan. Because we really wanted to have a good picture of what the impact and the rerouting of traffic would be from that Sunset driveway to that Logan Road driveway. So we collected the data at those two locations. We then routed it out to the Logan Road driveway, a portion <coughs> of it. Now, not all the traffic is going to reroute. Um, initially, when we were looking at it, we hadn't contemplated turning restrictions at Sunset Avenue, but rather what was more convenient, what was easier for people to get out, and do you really want to wait for a gap in the eastbound traffic that's stuck at the traffic light, or do you want to come out, make an, e an easier left on the Logan Road, and utilize the traffic signal that's there to make the left to head back to Route 35? And Justin, when you did your studies, you found that during the peak hours, there was a queue from the traffic light that went past our driveway. Yes, on a heading eastbound on Sunset, it routinely would back up from the signal past the driveway of the, the proposed right. development. So there was testimony to that effect and the difficulty, but... Um... Eastbound, eastbound on Sunset. Eastbound on Sunset, that's correct. So When that light was on, then it backed up. And it past, backs up potentially, you know, past the, past the driveway, past, the past the driveway. The, into the, uh, the garden center. Um, and so what that means is, as you are making a left... Jeremy, can we Sunset. just announce that the newest arrival... Uh, yeah, um, Jack Manning is here, our newest arrival, right? Um, Jack? Yeah, he's joined the meeting at 7. -11. And Jack, you were here the last meeting for this as well? He just signed We just signed that? Okay, so Jack signed his um, confirmation that you have watched the video of uh, the last meeting, correct? Okay, great. And just, Thanks. Jack, by the way, very brief summary, we moved the traffic impact study in. We've introduced the traffic engineer, and he just explained that he counted the traffic both on both roadways, the intersection, as well as in and out of our driveway, and he's just talking about his findings, just to catch up. Perfect. Great. So, where I was, essentially we wanted to take a look at the traffic that was currently entering and exiting the site, and then who would reroute to this new driveway. Um, as I mentioned, the left turn out onto Sunset is a major component of this because the queues coming on northbound Logan do not back up past the driveway. So you have that, while you have to wait potentially for people going north-south, you're not waiting for that queue to clear to be able to get out. So that was the major move we anticipated, but you also had people that are traveling north on Logan Road, turning left on the sunset and turning left into the site currently today, just from where they live, or if they find it more convenient on 35 northbound to come up Logan Road. Because we counted with cameras, we were able to track these vehicles to figure out where they were coming from, where they're going to. So then we rerouted them to the Logan Road driveway. And in order to ensure that there is sufficient capacity in that driveway, we ran capacity analyses utilizing the existing volume on uh, Logan Road and then this rerouted traffic. And what we find is that new driveway is going to operate with levels of service B or better during both of those peak commuting hours. There is capacity in Logan Road to accommodate this additional traffic. Now, I would note that the volumes we're talking about are not really all that high. We're talking about 18 cars, maybe, maybe 15 cars during the peak hour. Um, but so, it's, so it's not necessarily 18 cars at once, it's 18 cars over the course of an hour. Over the whole hour, that's correct. Okay. Are you saying 18 cars went a long, long, long road? No, 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 in and out of our driveway. Oh, in and out of the driveway, yes. okay. Right, so these are the volumes that we anticipate. There's about, in the morning, there's about 35 cars coming into the site. Okay. We anticipate about eight of them would reroute to this new driveway. Okay. Right, same thing, in, so we anticipate eight in and 10 out in the morning peak hour and three in and eight out in the evening peak hour that would then be on to Logan Road that weren't, some of them were already there, but really wouldn't be making that left or the right out of okay. Logan Road. And based on those volumes, would that have any impact on the, either the queue at the light or any impact on the traffic level on Logan Road? Meaning, you said the driveway would continue to operate at B. Would it change the level of service at that intersection on Logan Road? No, that was the other piece that we analyzed was the operation of the signal at uh, Sunset and Logan Road just to determine the type of impact it would have. And none of the levels of service changed. None of the delays even changed, really, because we're talking about a car every, I don't know, 10 minutes, right? And, um, and of the accidents you analyzed as it related to this site, uh, the, there were no accidents on Logan Road, but there were three accidents involved left-ins or left-outs on our property. So. We had the conversation earlier. I actually went back and dug through the, uh, the crash records that we obtained. We got crash records from the police department from January of 2021 
all the way through August of 2024, right? The longest extent that we can look at to identify if there were any type of crash history that would be concerning either along Logan Road or also the driveway. There were two crashes associated with vehicles exiting the driveway, one left and one right. The other one we were talking about earlier actually had nothing to do, with, even though it was westbound on Sunset, it was actually somebody, it was the queue coming back from 35 and somebody rear-ended somebody else. It had nothing to do with the operation okay. of the driveway. So, in your opinion, <laughs> if we were to provide this other driveway and require cars to use it for a left out during the peak afternoon hour, in your opinion, would that create a safer situation both for Sunset Avenue and for the site and not cause any detrimental impact to the Logan Road traffic? Absolutely. I mean, I think it, it provides that pressure relief valve, so you don't need to have a try and make a left out through the queue um, and then peek your way looking at westbound sunset. And, it, and based on the analysis that we've done, there's no impact, no negative impact to uh, Logan Road. Okay. Okay. Any questions for Justin? Um, yeah, before I go to, for, to you, sir, um, Ben, did you have a comment that you want to make about any of this? Yeah, so... <clears throat> um, I, I agree with the testimony. Uh, I, I reviewed the report, and I had my, my traffic engineer review the report, and, and we, we generated uh, our review comments um, for this. So the I'm fine with the condition of uh, restricting left turns out of the site onto sunset um, during the afternoon peak. And what did you say? That was 4, four to 7. 7. Four four to seven. seven. Yep. Um, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, and then I, I just want to get a little little more clarification on uh, it, I know it's in the report but I think for the for the board's benefit um, there was some concern uh, I think by some board members that there would be traffic backed up on Logan Road uh, that would <coughs> I guess restrict people from coming out of the new driveway uh, can you explain the the queue length there at the the light um, that's going northbound on Logan and while and, he's and looking for that, that Mr. Chair, we would, if the board would approve this, we would grant Title 39, which, as you know, gives the police the ability to ticket people who are making left turns out during the hours that they're not supposed mm -hmm. to. Okay. So um, it's a great question, Ben. Thank you for, I should have probably touched on this in the direct. Um, we did analyze the cues. We observed the cues. We also used the traffic analysis software. Um, to come up with what we determined the 95th percentile queue length. Now, there's approximately 185 feet from the stop bar to where this new driver would be along Logan Road. And the calculated 95th percentile queues, with the addition of the traffic uh, that we are proposing to relocate, was 178 feet, so just shy of where that driveway is. So what that shows is the 95th percentile, or happens 5% during that busiest peak hour, is just to the edge of where the driveway is. On average, what it is about 65 feet. So most of the day, the average queue is way, is much closer to the intersection. So there would be no um, no impediments to coming out of the driveway. And how, at the 95th percentile, how far is the queue on Sunset Avenue? And when does it p potentially clear? from our driveway. So Sunset Avenue to the driveway um, is 140 feet. So it's actually closer to the signal. Uh, the 95th percentile queues we see are um, 215 or 357 feet in the evening, right? So way beyond where that actual driveway is. So you, it could take a few light queues, cycles to, to get those gaps. Even the average queues extend, we have 158 feet where it's 100, um, to the through right. So, so it's not extraordinary situation. It's almost always blocked during that, the peak hour. That's correct. So basically for both during those peak hours, is what you're saying is four to seven? Yes. In the, yeah, yep. four to seven. That both of those lanes are pretty saturated. The eastbound approach the eastbound. coming uh, on Sunset Avenue, yep. yes. And the Logan Road one also going. So Logan Road on average, it's not, right? So Logan Road, what we saw during the build condition, the average is about 50 or 60 feet. So 90 even, feet, even during the peak time? Yep. 95th percentile, we're seeing 100 and, uh, maximum 178. So worst case scenario, at a 5% of the time during that, it'll be that way. But on average, it's not. That's oh, correct. Okay. I'm, okay. Okay. Did you want to? 
<clears throat> no, that was the the main uh, concern uh, that I had was was making sure that was that was clear. Um, yeah, I didn't have any other issues with it. Okay, so just from a, a board standpoint, would anybody like to ask some questions? I have a question. Okay. Sure. How are we notifying drivers that they can't make a left turn on Sunset? We're gonna have to between four and seven. We'll put signage up on the site and indicate it'll be enforced. So a sign like a like a like a no left yeah, turn. say no left turn. And, four and it'll seven. say with with the time That's time right. on there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just like you see, um, I think there's a similar sign going into the golf course. I think there's limit. Uh, there's a few other sites where there's some limitations like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have? Yes. Uh, uh, like, would you consider three to seven? And the reason why I asked that is because, you know, that's when all the bus traffic. And I heard during the testimony, you know, last time, that's where it seems to be a lot of the backup is around that three o'clock time. You know, the schools get out. Ocean Township schools get out you? at two forty-five, and they start hitting the Wanamas area around three o'clock, and then like it's a conti so. continuous loop till about four o'clock or so. What did you find by way of um, the cues and the issues at three versus four? So what we saw is if the peak time of the, uh, the eastbound sunset was five to six. As we went to either side, it dropped by about 10 to 15 percent. When you got down to about that three o'clock hour, you were about uh, 30 percent lower than what the peak that we saw at five o'clock was. So in my opinion, it wasn't wholeheartedly necessary to limit it at that point because we because the eastbound traffic has dropped uh, significantly 30 percent I didn't think it was absolutely necessary to limit it at that point but the westbound coming off of sunset you know crossing Logan and going from Logan there's been a I mean it backs up to you know Dave the Rouge Park that way too so I live around the corner that's why I'm you know experienced it you know trying to get across 35 at that time and you know, you always see that exactly what's happening. Someone's trying to make that right turn out. Right, but we're not, so that, and, and I understand what Mr. Palutis is saying, we're not affecting the cars heading off on Logan Road to make the right turn onto Sunset because we're coming from the other way. But it is, if you're, I mean. It's, well, if, if you're making if, a left out of the site. If you're making, sunset. I'm sorry, I said, I said right. Yeah, you're right, a left out of it. It's, and then a left on the sunset. And then you're trying to make a right onto sunset from Logan Road. It does cause that. Right in that intersection there. And it's usually around, like I said, it does, it does taper off. and it's. So, uh, again, we counted the queues during that time. I, my expert is saying it's not necessary. We would like to, we, we, we understood the board had concerns. We hired the traffic engineer for the purpose of having an expert offer that testimony. Mm -hmm. We're offering the four to seven based on the time frame when it is the worst mm -hmm. based on his testimony it's not necessary from an expert standpoint was the test all day i thought i heard you say between 4 30 and 7 30 earlier so what what we did was we specifically counted the turning movements from 4 30 to 6 30 and 7 to 9 but what we did was take a look at a 24-hour span of when the, the traffic spiked and then dropped to make sure that we were also encompassing those highest hours so when we looked at the movements on sunset that's when that spike was, that 5 p.m. and then dropping about 15, 20% every hour and then an hour on the outside of that. So you counted cars in and out of our site from 4 to from 7, 4 30, from 4 but you looked 30. at the roadway movements 24 hours. That's correct. Um, how many days did that span? The, um, the turning movement counts were done on one Thursday in September. Um, the 24-hour period we actually used metadata uh, produced by SMATS and it was actually monthly over the entire year so it included summer traffic that, well to dive a little further in counting in September I know we were lower than what you would see in the summer so we wanted to be able to encompass that so we used the monthly variations to increase the traffic it was actually went up by about 36 percent from what we counted to, to the peak summer so all that analysis, all those levels of service that I quoted to you are all based on that inflated summertime counts. When we looked at the 24 hour daily uh, variation that took in uh, basically the entire year and looked at the, the 24 peak hour variation. And, and just to clarify, because I've heard this testimony before and I know how that works. I just want to make sure that we're explaining it in, in lay terms. You essentially looked at the traffic throughout the year 
and you analyzed how much more traffic was on these roadways in the heat of summer and heat, pun not intended, at the height of summer versus September, and you found a 36% increase in traffic on those roads during those peak hours. That is correct. What so, just let me, and yes. so the numbers that you used are not based on the numbers you actually found out on the roads in September. It's based on the numbers you found out on the road in September plus 36%. Yes, that's correct. So you basically looked at it, worst case scenario, peak of summer. That's correct. Okay. Um, just just to take Mike's uh, comment here, does anybody else want to talk about Mike's comment about moving it to 3 o'clock? Does anybody? I mean, to me, I mean, just my opinion here, based on what these experts are saying, it doesn't sound warranted to move it to th from 4 to 3. Just my... But if anybody else has a... A comment about it. No. Okay. I, if if I I can just add that I don't have an issue with with what the applicant is offering four to seven. I, I think that does based on the data does yeah. encompass the the peak that that they're talking about. Great. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions or for, for this person for this? Well, I'm curious to see that if there's a sign exiting Bimbler onto Wikipedia to see what that time frame is. It's probably three quarters of a mile from the subject location, and I'm thinking that is 4:30 to 7:30, but I could be wrong. Maybe we could check and say. I certainly can check tonight, and mm -hmm. and I don't. I my intention is to wrap up tonight, mm -hmm. and, and again when that sign went in, I don't know what factors they relied on for that it may have been based on when they're busiest as opposed to when the roadways are busiest I don't know if there was a traffic study or not so I'd respectfully just suggest that we rely on the expert yeah I also think we want to take into account that the um, that um, we're asking this group to work with us on this right and uh, you know we are taking into account that it's a you know, medical office building that has different restrictions than any than another road possibly, right? And also, I'm going a little bit by Ben Ben's analysis here as well. Um, Can I ask what day on September that was? Your traffic? You did the traffic study. The what day? Uh, it was uh, September nineteenth, which was a Thursday. Okay. So, does anybody else have any questions for this um, individual? No. No. Um, anybody from the public like to uh, make a comment or uh, um, and talk and ask a question to about this? Would you like to step up and um, and be heard? I think you'd have. To, I think you have to come up here, Miss. Okay. And Mr. Chair, is it just questions of this witness? Comments would be at the end. Yes, this is just questions, right? Okay. You might as well just open it up and, and do okay. It. Yeah, I think it's easier because I think they're going to say the same thing. Okay, yeah. great. Questions and comments. I'm not going to understand. So I live. Ma'am, right I'm on. just going to have to get your name again for the record. Nancy Weary, W H E A R Y. Right. All right. You were sworn at the last hearing. You're still Correct. on the road. Okay. I'm trying to understand. So about the Logan Road driveway, what you're saying. Because right now, at the hours of four to seven, the traffic backs up back toward uh, 35, you know, to cut through. So I, I just I just don't understand the numbers that you, that it's gonna take us forever to get out of our driveway, I guess is what I'm saying. And a lot of times we do wait through a couple lights in our driveway to get onto Logan Road to go either, you know, up sunset down, wherever we're going. And you have the traffic coming in from 35 up by the car dealership. So that always backs up. That's, so can, you know. Can he answer that? I would like yeah, to, because so I'm not quite understanding you know, what you're saying. You did say that there is do. actually a backup of yeah. 170 feet. Right. So and it's probably more than that. But we counted it. Okay. Because the light, the traffic light appears to be, pretty close to where you want to put that driveway. No, so Mrs. Weary, I don't know if you heard the testimony. The driveway, was it just in approximately 185 feet from the light? Yes, that's correct. So our driveway is approximately 185 feet from the light, and at the worst case, it was projected out at 170 feet. Okay. So it the backup does not go to our driveway. 
it stops 15 feet short of our driveway, or if I'm doing the math wrong, maybe 10. So when they come out, out onto, they can only make the right or only make the left? They can go either right or left coming out of the driveway. So they, you can turn north onto Logan Road or south onto Logan Road. Okay. And the analysis that we did shows that given the level of traffic that we have on Logan Road currently and the rerouted volumes that we're operating with levels of service. Well, speak in English for me. When yes. you say the rerouted volumes, how many cars are you talking about would be making the left out of our site towards the light, towards Mrs. Weary's property? I think that's your question, right? How many cars are we adding coming that right, way? Right, because um, we can't project get out now. We can't get out any of those homes. We project nine in the morning and eight in the evening. Over a period Over of? Over a period of one hour. Right. Right, so that's a car every six minutes. That has to work their way into the flow of existing traffic on Logan Road going out to Sunset and wherever. That's correct, yep. And that's the analysis that we performed showing the levels of service. Okay. Well, I, I'm against it. That's all I can say. Okay, thank you. I'm the husband. I'm Gary Weary. Thank you, and sir, I'm, you're still under oath from last meeting also. I mean, again, we experience the traffic. There's a lot of traffic down there. I don't care what the study says. That is a low, that is a very narrow road. You have people that park on either side of those things, because people have more than two cars, and there are cars on that thing, and you better not drive fast down that road or you're going to hit somebody. When somebody's coming this way and you're coming this way and there's parked cars, you better stop. And you have to be very careful or you're going to hit everybody. And there's traffic there. And when we get traffic from the tr from Logan Road, we get it off the, the highway. There's also the, uh, we get it from the, uh, when there's ever a concert in Asbury Park, you get it from Logan. There's a lot of road. I mean, I don't, this room is bigger than the road that we have on. You take that thing, the two, uh, the desk, that's probably the size of the road. Put now a couple cars on each front of these houses. And each one of these houses, I guarantee you, has two or three cars on there. And you cannot drive down that car, drive down that thing at regular speed. You have to slow down. And there are times that I have to physically stop and let somebody go right by me because you're going to go this close. And that's just with regular traffic. And now you're going to, and the fact that you can put up a sign all you want. We have signs there now. We had a sign there now that said you couldn't park at a certain spot and thing. And people do it. And we've gone out and told people, don't park there because number one, you'll get a ticket, and number two, you're going to get hit. My car, as I said the last time, got hit. I had to park on the street one night. So, Mr. Weir, let me ask you a question. What, yes. what, what, what is your suggestion? Is your suggestion that no cars go out on the Logan and everything yeah, go out no, on Yeah, don't the... do it at all. Just come down 35. <laughs> so everything should go down Sunset, on to Sunset. Yes, go down 35 then. If they want to go to the office, well, they can go down 35, make the turn, and go in. There's already a path to go in there. I mean, this is a neighborhood. This is a neighborhood block. You don't need it. I mean, I'm not even going to go under the thing that you, you, you need. Uh, they have the variance. They can add 50 more cars. That's their right. They can do whatever they want. They can put 100 cars in there if they want to put it in there. Just don't do it down my driveway. Do, go down 35. Make them turn at the light at the Sunoco station. They go in. They go right into that exit. They go right into that entrance, and they go out that way that way. And that's it. I mean, you don't need this thing. It's a lot of traffic, and I'm t I've lived there for 20 years. And there's always an accident there. There's always an accident. There's always problems there. And until you put that light on there, there was an accident there every other, every other minute, because people would just go through the... Um, okay. I mean, I'm not just trying to be... It's just, it's frustrating. Yeah, I think... You see it. I, I appreciate what you're saying. I think, first of all, there was a, a couple of things that came to light, the number of accidents that did occur in, in, a, in a two and a half year period, right? Which was, all, which three was two and a half years, right. Three and a half years, right. Just, was only sunset. Right. The other is that I believe that, you know, they're trying to make their building more efficient for also all the people that visit their building, right? right? For all the people who come in and out, right? So, and they have, I believe, some legitimately stake to be able to do that. I'm not right. saying they don't have right. a right to do so, what they want with their I mean, business. I think it's I think it's unfortunate that the road that Logan Road was built as narrow as it was, right? I don't know if that's in my purview to hinder the applicant from what they're trying to do. So I can't solve that. 
I can't solve the problem on the fact that the road is very narrow. Well, I like them to be maybe good neighbors. I mean, again, they're part of that neighborhood. We try to be good neighbors. And I mean, it's not that I had an issue unrelated to this, but they were cutting down the trees one night and they cut out my power on my, uh, they hit my line. Okay. And then of course I tried to tell them and then of course they wanted to deny it. <laughs> and I finally, they finally fixed it. So again, I'm trying to be a good neighbor with them. They're trying to be good neighbors with us. And the thing is too, before they even put the sign up there that you couldn't park in their parking lot. People used to park in there all the time because there was no parking on the street. If you came down Logan Road, if you were having a house party, you would tell your guests, park in that parking I, lot. I, I, un I understand what you're saying. So just, just, to, just to appreciate right. our position, I understand. Look, is I that think. is that you know if it if it meets if it meets the use case of the what's allowable, right? And the and we also find that people are actually trying to make some kind of um, consideration for what we're asking for, right? And we want to take advantage of that as opposed to all of a sudden it, uh, it's um, it, we're not it, we're not we don't have that opportunity, right? So uh, um, I'm not. Mr. Chair, may I? Yeah, sure, you can talk to so, me. So, the other problem is the only variances that we need with regard to the driveway are one, that we have two instead of one, and two, the location of the curb cut. And we can solve those variances, but it would be in a way that I think would upset the wearies even more, would be <laughs> if we close Sunset Avenue altogether, because, again, which I'm not suggesting we're going to do, but the town has an ordinance that they want the drivers on the lesser roadways. And there's no question that Logan Road is a lesser roadway as it relates to traffic. So to avoid those variances, we would put the lo only a Logan Road driveway and put it on the center of the lot, which would bring it closer to the Wearies. So the only variances we need with regard to this are really helping what the concern is. And, and while I, I understand and I'm, and I'm empathetic to what the Wearies are going through at the same time, we're a citizen, well, not a residential citizen, a corporate citizen of Ocean Township, and we're looking to uh, avail ourselves of, of all of the same rights. And yeah, I appreciate you saying all that. Yeah, and, and um, I'm, 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 we're I'm empathetic. Yeah, the yep. there, Jennifer got confused because there are two standards in the ordinance for a residential zone, the driveway has to be on the street of lesser classification. In a commercial zone, it has to be on the street of higher classification. So actually, the sunset would be the one that's the correct one. However, the one thing that nobody has brought up, and I'm, I'm a very lazy driver. I always look for the path of least resistance and what's going to get me to where I can go the quickest. If I'm coming out of that site as it exists now during the rush hour, and I can't make a left-hand turn, I'm going to make a right-hand turn on the sunset, go down to Turner, Take Turner down to Appleby, Appleby to Logan, and come back up Logan, and accomplish basically the same thing that's going to be accomplished by this proposed driveway. I'm just going to, there's going to be traffic coming onto Logan. I think some of the traffic on Logan right now is that's what's happening, and it's also putting more traffic onto Turner and Appleby because of that. So you so it's a very it's a very simple move to to turn out of that driveway on Sunset. Go. So, East on Sunset to Turner, make a right on to Turner, go down to Appleby, a right on Appleby, and then a, and then a right up Logan. So, Jim, you're quicker. suggesting that what we're proposing yeah. is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, but you're proposing. Yeah, that's what I, I could, it was hard to tell. Yeah, it was hard to tell, yeah. It's much different than what exists yeah, now, right. except you don't have the Turner. Right, you're proposing that it uncomplicates a lot of things, and right. Okay. Well, thanks for that comment, even though I didn't call on you, but thanks. <laughs> um, Ben, after listening to this, do you have anything you want to say? Um, <clears throat> I, I agree with what Jim said, and kind of uh, to piggyback on that, one of the, the things that was brought up last time was restricting uh, turns out of the driveway on Logan Road to right out only. Yeah. And it would be the exact same thing in reverse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cars would turn on to Logan, then left on to Appleby, and then down turn. Yeah, be a, it, it, would, it would nothing would be solved. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I looked at that when we were before this went. Um, okay. Uh, anybody else from the um, um, from the audience like to make a comment or ask a question? Nisa's own air. I was 
Facebook last time as yes, well. Yes, and you're still under oath. Yes. Um, just respell your last name. Z like zebra, A-U-N-E-R-E. Thank you. Um, so I just, you know, wanted to revisit the comment I made last time is, which if you look at that dental office that's right on the other side of the highway, that has a very short distance as well to go out to make the left onto 35 North, which is the way a lot of people are traveling. There is a sign that clearly says, don't block the intersection. And that seems to solve their issue without having to have an extra entrance. Yes, there's two entrances, <coughs> but it's a southbound only. So anybody who's trying to make a left to go up 35 North, there's a sign that clearly says, don't block the driveway. And that's sufficient to serve their needs for serving their population. Um, the other comment is- You're talking about the, you're talking about the, um, the dentist, dentist on, the, right. on the other yeah. side? Yeah, there's a uh, sign that says, don't block the entrance. On the other side of Sunset. Yes, exactly. And it's a shorter time. distance from that exit to the light than from Sunset mm. to the light. So it serves the purpose on that office building. I don't understand why it can't serve the purpose on the Sunset building. Um, the second point is that what's going to stop people from cutting through? Traffic's backed up, trying to go into Asbury. They're all going to just keep cutting through the parking lot. So what's going to help stop then overflow traffic that's going to use that as a cut through to get through past the lights? Which, no, right, I'm just saying, so it's not necessarily eight cars. It could be substantially more that are using that to well, cut through. So I just want to remind the board. The eight board. cars was to yeah. make a left turn towards uh, the other let's, way away let's, from uh, Asbury. Let's okay. take, I just let's want to remind the board again. This is a permitted use. Yes, correct. You, you can't, right. all this out, excuse me, offsite traffic isn't really relevant to the application. You're limited, you're very much limited to the site plan issues and whether it makes sense from a site plan perspective to allow cars to exit out on the Logan. It isn't a question of the number of vehicles that are going up and down Logan and going down Sunset. Yeah, no, I I, I, no, I, I, I understand. I think we understand. I, 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 I think that I think sometimes. No, but I, understood from his comment that actually Sunset is the appropriate exit then based on the comment of the commercial zoning. So, I mean, yes, understood. But then that's that would indicate that's the proper driveway and there's ways to solve for that yeah, exit marriage, issue yeah, no, the yeah, two driveways right. are did you did you yeah, did. Yeah, did. so I mean so there's other ways to solve that like signage and making sure that people are respectful to leave so access and, and mrs. And Zonier I think that the testimony also was though it's not waiting for the space necessarily to, only to get through the queue that's waiting to go eastbound it was also waiting for that and then being able to hop over and make the left. Understood. So, so not blocking the driveway doesn't help. Well, but that's that the same purpose as Aspen. Aspen is trying to make the left. The, the light there mm -hmm. is significantly longer because okay. it's a highway. So the gap in between when the cars are coming, <laughs> and it's also a it's also a dedicated left turn on the other way. So it's a much so different. Sunset, though. That's a dedicated left turn lane. And yes, there's no turning light, but there is a lot more traffic coming from the industrial areas I across. I, I mean, I, I yeah, understand, but I, I mean, you live there, my office yep. is there. I think we can both agree that that driveway is almost always blocked. So I'm going to correct what I just said. I mean, uh, based upon mm -hmm. the fact that it is a variance, you do have to find that the benefits of allowing the local the Logan exit outweigh the detriment. Excuse me, outweigh the detriments of allowing the exit onto Logan. Mm -hmm. So that is something you do have to uh, put into perspective. Right, which is why we conceded and yes, an expert yeah. to give you all the testimony. Yeah. And you gentlemen think it does the benefits outweigh the negatives? Is that a, is that a fair? Yeah, I think either? it's a better solution than what currently exists now. Yeah. And, and I know that you said the same thing. So. <clears throat> and obviously for the people who run the building. <clears throat> and obviously for the people who run the build, uh, obviously well, the people well, who... The, <laughs> their right. opinion doesn't matter. Right. No, I'm talking <laughs> to you. Yeah, it, it no, we out. have to show that it's a benefit yeah. to the traffic overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anybody have any? Okay. So, is anybody else in the in the in the audience like to make a comment or come up and make a statement or have a question? No. Okay. Before, so I'm going to end that part of our discussion. I want to bring it back up to you. Does anybody else have any questions or any discussion you want to have up here about this? No. Okay. Mr. Chair, I do have a planner, but it's only really to discuss those two variances that, I mean, the landscaped area is not really changing. Uh, we're adding a lot of landscaping. It's the curb cut location and the number of curb cuts. The parking isn't changing and the parking space width isn't changing. 
Yeah, so, I don't. I personally don't think it's necessary. Being you have Jim no. testifying as a planner that he feels and, and better. And again, that's, I want to I, give no, you I, that option. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure where everybody feels right now. So I think. We, I think we could kind of. Uh, can I get a motion from somebody either on the affirmative or the negative, right now about this? Uh, I don't know what you're asking. I'm sorry. I want somebody to make a motion here. To either approve or deny. Yeah, to, yeah, to either approve or deny. I make a motion to approve. You make a motion to approve. Can I get a second? A second. You got a second. Okay, so um, well, we have a, on the table right now is a motion to approve the applicant. There's a positive yes. resolution, correct? I did, I did. I did close the yeah. conversation. Yes. Yes, I seconded. Yes. Yes. Did, I think you forgot him. Forgot me. Yeah, I, I seconded and, and yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you and thank you everybody for your comments. There, I think you asked me for this. I printed it for you. Okay, we have a we have a new uh, we have a new case. Um, Maureen Cliff, trustee block uh, five five dot uh, lot twenty seven four six five West Park Avenue, Oakhurst zero seven seven five zone R four. Um, the applicant seeks a minor subdivision to subdivide the existing single family residential lot into uh, two single family residential lots. No, I don't look like Rick. Uh, not at all. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what Rick looks like, so I have no idea what Rick looks like. I don't really? think I might. I might. Yeah, I well, note that Mr. S Ms. Samant has stepped down. And thank you for the record, Jennifer Krimko, law firm Van Sokerman, and here on behalf of the applicant, I'm filling in for Rick Brodsky since I was here. This application hopefully will be uh, a bit simpler. We have a lot that is extraordinarily oversized, almost four times the size. That the zone requires we're not looking to even subdivide it into three lots which we would be able to by density we're just looking to subdivide it into two lots by drawing a line down the center because of the size and shape of the lot in that it's narrower but very very deep uh, we require variances as it relates to lot width um, and we we'll mark in the following exhibits exhibit a1 will be the application itself exhibit a2 is the minor subdivision plan and those are the only exhibits i have from the applicant and then have Exhibit B1 is in Board 1 will be the Board Planner's Report. Exhibit B2 will be the Board Engineer's Original Report. Exhibit B3 will be the Board Engineer's Revised Report. Exhibit B4 will be the Crime Prevention Report. Exhibit B5 will be the Traffic Safety Bureau Report. Exhibit B6 will be the Code Enforcement Report. Exhibit B7 will be the Fire Marshal Report. And Exhibit B8 will be the Department of Public Works Report. Okay, just a quick uh, note. Um, uh, Ms. Samante has uh, decided to re has, uh, recuse herself from this, uh, this um, case. Because our uh, engineer looks strangely like she does. <laughs> uh, and thank you. And as I indicated, and also I just wanted to note that uh, we're not proposing any construction at this time at all. It's just purely to subdivide it. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Chet, have him sworn, and just walk through the numbers as it relates to the bulk standards. Okay, sir, do you swear any testimony you're going to give tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. And you are a licensed land surveyor, state of New Jersey. I am. And a licensed <coughs> professional engineer. And a licensed well. professional engineer. I don't want to yes. take that away from Thank you. Thank you. Apologize. Never it's okay. Again. So just if you could go through the dimensions of the lot as it exists, what the zone requires, and what the lot configurations will be as proposed. The lot as it presently exists has a frontage of 160 feet and a depth of 260 to 300 feet. Has a total area of 40, 47,116 square feet. Um, properties in the R4 zone, which requires 10,000 square feet of lot area, 90 feet of width, and 100 feet of depth. Um, the lots have been proposed to be divided almost equally 
Each lot's about 23,500 square feet, uh, but each lot does require a lot width variance. Um, the lot to the the lot to the east has a width of 81.5 feet. The lot to the west has a width of 80.6 feet. So even though the, the lot width doesn't meet the requirement, the lot area is more than twice what the ordinance requires. Yes. And notwithstanding the lot width, you're showing a building footprint that fully complies. So yes. if the board grants this, when these lots are developed, it can be done without any variance relief. That's right. Okay, and then um, I think it was in Jim's letter, there was a suggestion that the non-conforming driveway uh, on the property on the east be removed, uh, in that there's some gravel that kind of goes up to the property line. And one of the things that I asked Jim before the meeting, and I'll ask the board, is we're happy to remove it. We agree that any new home will have to have a conforming driveway or come back to this board. We would just ask that it be a condition of building permit as opposed to subdivision so we don't get held up in bonding and going to the county and all kinds of other things. I did run it by uh, both Colleen and uh, Jim before the meeting. So short of that. Um, I'm sorry, so, so you want it to be a condition of what? Building permit for building construction permit. of a home. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that, that the variance not be granted basically. Right. I, I totally understand. Granted, then the driveway has to be five feet. Right, right totally understand. Okay. I have one other minor comment, which I realized today that I missed when I was reviewing the application. The ordinance requires that the front setback be drawn, be, be measured from the right of way that is recommended in the master plan for the type of road. Who wrote these ordinances? I don't know who the guy is. He, he, he definitely. I, I got to have a talk with him. <laughs> <laughs> but, All right. So what is that now? Yeah. But, but the, but what so the so can you repeat it? Yeah, the, the front setback has to be measured from the right of way as recommended in the master plan for the street. In this case, the recommended uh, right of way width for West Park Avenue is 66 feet in the master plan. Okay, so we'll move the, it back. That would the existing right of way is 50 feet. So if you take half of the 16 foot difference, the recommended right of way on the north side would be eight feet in from the front property line. So the front setback would have to be the 30 foot required setback plus the eight foot setback. Okay. Which still it would fully conform. It just means that 30 foot front setback line should be 38 feet. And I have a question, Jim. Oh. And, and again, this is- Wait, 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 wait. Let's hold your question. Just so I fully understand this for the resolution. Yeah. What exactly that they're proposing? How much? They're proposing thirty from the front property line, and sixty-six feet is. And it should be thirty-eight feet. From okay. The and so we're going to propose thirty-eight. Yeah. Can I just? Yeah. You're going to change it to thirty-eight. That would count for well, that. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Just one thing is that because this is a county road. Yeah. The county has fifteen. Feet yeah. They. Road. Yeah. The county has a right of way is fifty feet. So the municip. How does the municipality have a right of way width on a county road that? They don't have, con and I'm just, uh, I it's don't necessarily just, object to the AP. It's been that curious. way in the master plan since 80, and when we updated the master plan, I didn't catch that. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, you'd agree that the, it, because it's a county road, they're never going to widen it wider than. I, I don't think it's ever going to be widened any wider than it is right now. No, no, no. But at, at worst, it's going to be where we're proposed. So we are proposing to dedicate 15, 15 feet. feet by way of easement to the county for road widening. The town, I don't think, would have the right to widen those additional no, eight feet. No, no. But the master plan, it's, it's the way the ordinance is written. It's a technical barrier. So, so, but you're saying so, you're going to give the 38. Yeah. Yeah. Did I hear well, you say that? Well, I'm already giving you 45, but if you only want 38, I'm, so I'm giving more than was required. No. I, I'm proposing giving, it as. Are uh, you giving 30 feet? From the easement from, line. From the easement. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, you're fine then. So there's no I, variance. Okay. So much okay, crossing yeah, out everything no, I just yeah, tried to write down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine then. Okay. okay. You're given 45, so you're fine. Okay. So yeah. right now the only issue is, well, I shouldn't say the only. What is, is, is lot width? That's it. Instead of it being 90, it's 88 and 80 or something it's like 80 that? 80 and 80 81. And 81 and 80. 81. Okay. So, so because the driveway step back is going to be done right. at construction. Yeah. Right. Okay. And the lot frontage actually conforms because the frontage can be 65% of the lot width. 
So the frontage conforms. Okay, and the other and the other statement is that the um, the lot itself is uh, exceeds the average. The, the, well, no, not so the average. It actually the, each of the lots are more than double, double the, size the size of the ordinance right, requires. Right. Okay, okay. Is there any other thing to talk about? Not in my okay. opinion. All right. Do you guys have anything you want to discuss on this? What's the what's the um what the, what does it look like uh, for their neighbors? Is it? Uh, I do have a planner here. The, most of the lots in the neighborhood are smaller than these proposed lots, and a number of them have widths that are very similar to what's proposed. Mm -hmm. Directly across the street, just by all the widths, all the lots are much smaller and have widths that are similar mm -hmm. to what's being proposed. And on the same side, they're not quite as deep, and again, the widths vary, but they're pretty close to what's being proposed here. Okay. Do you, do you have any other comments you guys want to make? No, engineering-wise, there I, I I don't have any issues with it. Okay. Anybody have any things that they want to ask here? Uh, I just have a clarification. The driveway removal includes soil decompaction, right? I'm not sure I know what that means, but yes. <laughs> I mean, it's a driveway, so it's essentially impervious because the soil's been compacted. It, it's my understanding that from the that the that the stone drive was just gravel and it's not even there. Nothing's. This used to be a two-family home. Mm -hmm. Nothing's been on this property in decades, as I understand it. So. To the extent that it was compacted, it may have un decompacted by itself. But yes, it will most definitely include decompaction. And I learned something Thank new you. today. So, so for the record, Ms. Krimko actually said something humorous that both sides actually laughed at. So the, so we, where is the driveway? History being made. Where, where is that driveway? Well, there's one hugging the east side of the property line, east side of the property. It says Stone Drive, Mr. Reynos. Asphalt Drive, it says? Maybe. No, 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 it's a stone drive running up the right side. The asphalt drive is on the neighbor's side. Yeah, the stone drive. Is it right there? That's a stone drive? Got it, okay. That, that little stub is a stone drive right there. Got it, okay, got it. Yep, yep, thank you. Okay, does anybody, um, uh, does anybody have any, any questions or anything they'd like to ask? Okay. On the board? No? Anybody from the community have anything they'd like to say or make a comment about or ask a question? No? I do have a planner here. I'm sure he'd like to comment, but I'm assuming the board doesn't need to hear it based on Jim's think, testimony. I, th I think we're cool. I think we're cool. So, if that, so I think we're going to close the, uh, um, the big comment session we have from the public, kind of close that. Um, and uh, anybody want to make a motion on this application? I'll make a motion for approval. I'll With second. The variances. Variance. Variance noted. For each lot. There's actually two variances. Two lots. Right, right, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Variances. Schrodinger's variance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same variance with both. I'll second. Great. He made the motion. He second. It's okay. Yes. 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 I think you missed. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, I forgot the Yankees game is on, isn't it? No, it's not. No, that's not. We're not. We're not in a rush. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I, I guess we're all done here. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion to, um, I'm all done. I'm right? to adjourn. Can okay, I get a motion to adjourn? I'll second. Okay, great. Have a nice night, everybody. Thank you. All right.